Hey there, Pokemon Pip, and Obi here, also known as the Acoustic Kind, bringing you another Pokemon narrative to Wi-Fi battle. This is going to be a UU tier battle against a YouTuber by the name of Ninja Labib. Uh, both of our links will be in the description if you'd like to see more content from me or check him out for any reason. This is going to be a new UU team I made, uh, still kind of testing it out. And uh, yeah, I'm going to leave my Hinotori, my Maltrez. I'm just going to go for the substitute here. I know that uh, Drabions can learn uh, Whirlwind and Aqua Tail, but I'm confident that I'll be faster, so I'm just going to sub to test to see... Uh, what exactly he's going to go for. Also, if he went for some sort of entry hazard or something like that, or went for a switch, it could have been very advantageous for me. So, uh, he does opt to just go for Toxic Spikes now. Maybe he thought that he could take that Flamethrower a bit better, uh, and, you know, take the two... take the two turns to set up his uh, spikes and then break my sub before going out or something like that. Unfortunately for him, that's not going to be the case. I'm not sure if that was his game plan or if he is just purposefully sacrificing his Drapion just so he has the ability to get the deadly poison on the rest of my team. Unfortunately for him, I do have a Hitmontop and a Blastoise, both with Rapid Spin, although in my current version of the team, I've changed Hitmontop out for a Miss Magus. But I'm just going to go ahead and go for a Toxic on this Slowbro he brings in. Uh, I'm pretty confident that I can Toxic stall him with my Moltres. Well, not completely, obviously, because he can just uh, keep surfing me. But it will allow me to easily get some toxic damage on this thing. And if he were a Sleep Talker, Rest Talker, it could have been a little bit problematic. But I do carry uh, a Phaser and uh, some Pokemon that could take advantage of those Sleep Turns. So I wasn't really too worried about that. And I could just keep subbing down to get a little bit more toxic stall on him. But I'm just going to take this opportunity to switch out to my Atkins Fail. My Chansey, knowing that he has been in for, you know, one or two turns with the Toxic, so he will go down before me for sure, uh, which will eventually force the switch. So I'm going to take this turn to set up my uh, Stealth Rocks, predicting him to switch out because he is behind on the Toxic uh, turn counters. And he makes a pretty good play switching into Scyther. I know Scyther can carry the Brick Break. Maybe he was predicting the Stealth Rocks, although normally you see like Registeel or a member like that carrying the Stealth Rocks on the team or like Elite Oxy or something. I'm going to switch out to my Kung Ku, my Blastoise, because uh, it's a physical wall. It could take a uh, Brick Break easily. It carries Roar if he wants to set up, and it carries Aqua Jet for revenge killing and stuff like that. He does opt to try to set up on me with a Sub Sword Dance combination before going off. Unfortunately for him, I am a Phaser Utility Blastoise, so uh, that's not going to work out too well for him. And it's going to bring him into a Charizard, another four times weak Pokemon to Stealth Rocks. And I didn't see a Spinner on his team, so I'm really surprised at his team composition. Especially because he carries Toxic Spikes without really many bulky Pokemon. Um... I think Stealth Rocks would help him ensure more KOs that way. Maybe he's just trying to stop Poke uh, the opponent from being able to stall his sweepers out uh, by deadly poisoning them all. I don't know. But I went for a rest there instead of an Aqua Jet on that previous turn because I knew Life Orb would kill him off in case I could survive. So that was my thought process there. And I bring in this Blaziken on the double down because it's Scarfed. And I'm just going to go for the safe Flare Blitz in case he wants to stay in because I know that... Uh, Sceptile's base speed's higher than Blaziken, so he might think he'd be able to get a move off first. Just wanted to play it safe, but he does make a smart play, go out and do his Slowbro, because Slowbro has very high physical defense and obviously is going to resist the fire-type attack. So I go to my Pop Gur Cat, uh, a Leafeon. It's actually a physical wall Leafeon, so he could do some pretty good damage to me with Psychics. But I know that with a stab super effective move, uh, Leaf Blade is going to do enough where he's going to have to keep slacking off. And... Uh, I do have the toxic turn count advantage by one, or I believe. So that's pretty much my thought process there. And I predicted uh, him to go for the attack now. I don't really want my Leafy on to take a psychic, so I am going to just go to my Atkins fail again, knowing that uh, I am ahead in the toxic turn counters. So yeah, unfortunately for me, my Blastoise died without getting a rapid spin off. So that's why you're going to see a lot of my switches. Uh, it's so that I will be ahead in the Toxic turn counter so that his Pokemon will die to Toxic faster. And I did go for a Seismic Toss on that turn just in case he wanted to switch in that Scyther um, or anything else that enjoys not having uh, good damage taken on it. So he's going to bring in this Alakazam. I switched to my fucking Zoan. You're going to see some parts of this battle sped up just because they do get a little bit stallish. And the reason I switched in was predicting the trick so then he would be stuck into trick because I'm a Choice Scarfer. But uh, unfortunately for me, he set up a substitute, so that's why I had to go back into the Atkins fail. And uh, I am, I'm not a normal Chansey. I actually carry special defensive um, investment, which is really weird because of uh, Chansey's al like already high special defense. So normally you invest all the points into defense. 
uh, so it can take at least some physical moves. But that is not my Chansey's investment, so I am just going to start soft boiling up, able to take a Focus Blast, and I'm Life Orb stalling him, which is good for me. Unfortunately for me, he is going to notice that I'm just trying to Life Orb stall him, so he's going to start going for Substitute, knowing that he can uh, Toxic stall me. So it is going to force me to start going for Seismic Toss now, uh, break his sub, and he just goes for another sub here. Uh, I kind of thought he was going to switch into Slowbro, but uh, either way, I'd go for the Seismic Toss. Um, I, I thought he would want to save that Alakazam for later. But now I'm going to predict the Focus Blast and go into my Maltras to resist it, knowing that he will kill himself off this turn to Life Orb damage. But he's going to predict that pretty nicely and just go in, go with a uh, Psychic. Uh, I don't really remember how much HP my uh, chance he was at, so I don't think uh, a Psychic would have done too much if I had decided to stay in. So now I'm going to make a misplay and go for Roost, thinking he'd go for Slack Off, but I should have just gone for Substitute, because then I could just uh, Roost on the following turn if he had gone for Slack Off, if you see what I'm saying. This battle is actually pretty old, so I don't remember if that was just a simple misplay of not going for the Substitute, or if that was a misclick. Um, yeah, it was. it's a pretty old battle, so I don't actually remember. But either way, it's going to cost me my Moltres, so very poor play on my part. I'm just going to bring in my Atkins Fail just to get some uh, Toxic Stall on this Slowbro, knowing that I am ahead in the Toxic counter. So I know I can outspeed and just go for a Soft Boiled, and he's not going to be able to do too much damage for me to me. And he's going to opt to just stay in and go for a Psychic, which isn't going to do Jack Diddly Balls. Um, maybe hoping for a Spideff Drop. I don't know. I kind of thought he was going to slack off that turn and then switch into his Sceptile. But, uh... Either way, uh, he is at a pretty big disadvantage at this stage in the game. And now it's pretty much a face-off between my Chansey and his Slowbro. Sorry if this is, like, you know, kind of uh, stallish, but I thought overall this battle was pretty strategic. It did show some nice uh, switches and some nice plays. Even with his team composition, which I thought was a little um, odd, it is uh, letting me show you guys my new U team and everything. And, uh... All that kind of cool, cool beans. So he's going to switch into his Sceptile now at this stage. Uh, I don't really know what kind of Sceptile this is, and I'm confident that either my Scarf Blaziken with a T-Punch or my Leafeon is going to be able to deal with his Slowbro. So I'm just going to stay in as fodder with my Chansey to scout what kind of Sceptile this is. Luckily for me, he's not a sub seeder who would get a lot back from Chansey. But I am just going to bring my Party Table a hip on top now, and I'm going to make what may seem sort of like a strange play, I'm going to go for Pursuit. The reason I go for Pursuit is I'm confident I can live one of his attacks, and if he switches out, it'll kill him, and if he stays in, it'll kill him. Either way, it guarantees that I don't have to deal with his Sceptile anymore at this stage in the game, and as I said, I already have checks for his Slowbro, especially at such a whittled down amount of health, so even though it is going to cost me my hip on top overall, um, I still would regard it as a good play. Luckily for me, he didn't get the Leaf Blade crit which does have an a increased chance of a critical hit. So he brings in his Slowbro, obviously, last poke. And I'm just going to stay in as fodder, keep going for Pursuit. It is super effective, and I do get the uh, Technician bonus. Uh, but it doesn't really matter because uh, Slowbro has very high defense, and Pursuit still, even with Technician bonus, is at a low base power, and it's not Stab. So he is going to calm mind up, knowing that I'm going to kill, be killed off by Toxic that turn, which was a pretty good play. Uh, slack off also would have, you know, worked. And I'm just going to bring in my Popker Cat, just so I can go for the Leaf Blade. I'm pretty confident I could take one Psychic if he wanted to go for that. And I didn't want to bring my Blaziken just in case a Scarf T-Punch didn't kill and he could kill me off with a Psychic. Although I could just Revenge Kill with Leaf Yon if that were the case anyway. So that's pretty much going to be the game. Uh, a few seconds left here to wrap it all up. Hope you guys enjoyed Pokemosh Pit. Sorry if it was a little bit stallish, but uh, like I said, thought it'd be a pretty fun uh, opportunity for you guys to see some cool stuff and all that kind of things. So feel free to check out my channel. Feel free to check out Ninja Labib's channel. Um, like if you enjoy or want to help out Pokemosh Pit. And I will catch you guys later.